WPTV's First Alert Weather on WSTU is brought to you by Sailfish Roofing, offering excellence, honesty, and integrity in everything they do. Sailfish Roofing, 772-263-ROOF, community roofing company you can trust. Sailfish Roofing, now here's WPTV's First Alert Meteorologist. Your WPTV First Alert Forecast. Tomorrow, weak cold front moves in, highs in the mid to upper 80s for the middle part of the week. Then Thursday and Friday as the front passes, highs down to the upper 70s. Morning temperatures down to the low to mid 60s. Friday morning will be the coolest morning with lows in the upper 50s to low 60s. Rain chances nice and low for Thursday and Friday. Increasing rain chances for the weekend ahead of another front. Highs back to the upper 70s to low 80s for the weekend. I'm WPTV First Alert Meteorologist Katya Hall for WSTU. 1450, Martin County's Heritage Station. The opinions expressed are those of the show's host and not the staff or management of Port St. Lucie Broadcasters. Any reproduction without written consent of WSTU and WPSL is strictly prohibited. Now it's time for Quality of Life Radio, brought to you by Cigna and Aetna Medicare. Here are your hosts, Gary Owen and Tom Bouvier. Hello and good morning to all of you beautiful people. Yes, you. I'm talking about you and you and you. So thank you for joining us on this extraordinary Tuesday morning. It's November 15. And do you know what that means? It's the day before November 16th. It means there's only, well, that's true, but there's only 47 more days left to 2022. And then we springboard Mm. into 2023. Uh, And so we want to welcome all of you to the world famous Quality of Life radio show. I am Gary Owen, president of Owen Insurance Group and your extraordinary host. And I'm your fantastic host, Tom Bouvier. The Boof. The booth. The booth. And by the way, the show is sponsored by Cigna Medicare Advantage, so we appreciate our sponsorships uh, with uh, Cigna. And uh, hopefully you're catching us live on Facebook. If you have not yet connected with us, uh, go to Facebook and follow us at the Quality of Life Radio Show. Of course, you can catch us uh, on the radio. If you still listen to AM on WSTU 1450 AM and WPSL 1590 AM and also tune in on Alexa. So, uh, Tom, we have three segments to the show, and we're here every single bloody Tuesday morning. Absolutely. We love the studio. We love our producers. And, and the w- eggs and bacon that we get. And the eggs and bacon that uh, is coming up right up, I'm sure. <laughs> but besides the eggs and bacon, we come here every Tuesday morning to bring relevant content to our listeners. And so this is information that you can really use in your life. Uh, secondly, we love to support and showcase local business owners, uh, community leaders, uh, and we have a wonderful guest on the show here today. And last of all, Gary, you and I, we love to bring education and information about insurance planning that will help improve the quality of people's lives. You know, Tom, there's so much misinformation out there uh, with insurance planning and uh, the TV commercials, and it's just amazing Uh, that people are falling into this trap. So you and I are here every Tuesday to simplify insurance planning, to bring transparency so you can make an informed decision. I can guarantee you when you call those 800 numbers uh, with those pitchmen on those TV commercials, you are not getting the rest of the story. Uh, So stay tuned for more information on today's show. We'll provide, uh, Tom and I'll provide you with that. Uh, The second part of our show, we're going to do some uh, fun health facts and 10 random fun facts. They make no sense, but they're fun. <laughs> they uh, are fun. I read them. Like, like one of Amazing. them. Amazing. Uh, Nutella. Did you know that uh, yeah. Nutella was invented shortly after World War II because chocolate was so expensive? And what do they make with Nutella? Does anybody know what they put in to make uh, some type of nut, some type of hazelnut, hazelnut, hazelnut. yeah, Yeah. uh, little bits and flakes of chocolate with with hazelnut. I thought hazelnut was expensive too, more expensive than chocolate, but Mm -hmm. it it is now, I think. Uh, you you buy a jar of of Nutella, you think you're buying a gold stick, (laughs) that's Uh, right. uh, So, anyway, uh, we're gonna uh, introduce you to a friend of mine who's been on the show before, uh, Sean Williams. He is the 
extraordinary executive vice president of Marine Bank and Trust. And we had Sean uh, with us in May. And, and uh, so I was uh, inquiring as to what changes happened from May because uh, he was going to come back in November. He's here now and kind of reflect on where we are today compared to where we were back in May and what his projection was, being the economist that he is. Uh, <laughs> and he also brought a special guest on the show. So I'm going to let him uh, introduce his special guest. In the meantime, uh, we welcome Sean Williams on our show. Sean, good morning. Good to have you with us good again. Morning. Good morning, G-Man. Good to be with you. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I, wish, uh, I wish I had had a better outlook when I was on the show last time. And Actually, I was concerned that you weren't going to invite me back, because, but uh, <laughs> but here we are, and, and and I did bring a special friend with me, and you're going to have to stick around to find out who that is. But uh, but yeah, I think when I was on the show last time, I said uh, the the economy was in a really strange place. I mean, is in is in a very strange place. I was concerned about the affordability issue. I saw that getting much worse, uh, and obviously it has, especially with interest rates going up. Uh, I think at the time I had said that uh, inflation had probably peaked. There was a lot of a lot of speculation that mm -hmm. inflation was going to accelerate even further from there, but it does seem that uh, inflation has peaked. I mean, it was over 9%. It's down into the sevens now, but I also said that it wasn't going to go away quickly, that, you know, it's probably going to hang around for a while, and, and certainly because of that, uh, the Fed was going to continue to raise interest rates. We've obviously and seen that. And they still are. <laughs> yep. That's yep. his favorite pastime. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, uh, and, and I think, you know, the, the, you had asked me in that last show, was, is there one piece of advice you can mm -hmm. give people? Do you remember what it was? No. Oh, don't speculate. Yeah, oh, that's right. Don't yes. speculate. If there's one thing we learned from 2008, it is don't yeah. speculate, whether it's real estate or stocks or crypto. Yes. Now, you know, you see in the news what's happened with FTX yes. and everything that's happening. I mean, all the people that would have speculated with them, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. There's going to be a lot of people getting hurt. My God, man. we uh, Crypto is has taken a plunge. Yeah. And companies are out of business. CEOs are... Hiding, under probably the, applying under the for bed. a job at McDonald's. <laughs> so you know, and and you know, I almost let someone talk me into getting uh, investing in crypto. So thank God, I did not do that. Yeah, I don't know much about it. To I be don't quite know, frank, and, 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 and nor do I. And all the crypto it's enthusiasts, scary. you know, they they say, "What do you mean you don't know anything about it?" I mean, it's it's so it's so easy to understand. And I I look at it and I'm like, I I can't wrap my head around. Thank it. Thank God so. I don't. No, no, not much about so. it because I kept uh, an arm's length distance from that night yep. nightmare fan. Yep. Yep. And you mm -hmm. also uh, talked about the mortgage rates because you're in the banking industry. So you see firsthand every day uh, consumers getting crushed by these interest rates. Yeah. What's going on? Where are, we, where are we going with the interest rates on the mortgages? What's happening? Do you see any reprieve in the near future? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think back to January of this year, uh, mortgage rates were in the mid threes, threes. the mid threes. And s beginning last month, they went north of seven. So you have a situation where mortgage rates have doubled within the calendar year. I don't think that's ever even happened before. So uh, that has had a massive impact on the purchasing power of consumers. Massive. I mean, put it to you this way. If you, right. if you, if you are working a job and you can afford a payment, a monthly payment of, let's say, $1,500 a month, let's say that that's, that's the principal and interest that you can afford. Well, when the mortgage rates are 3.5%, that means you can afford a roughly $350,000 mortgage. But when the mortgage rates go to 7%, mm. I mean, you can only, you know, you're, the mortgage you can now afford is probably more like $225,000. Mm. So it has a massive, massive impact on the uh, house that you can afford. Um, you know, the thing about mortgage rates, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's one of the most misunderstood rates out there. I mean, I think there's a misconception that the Federal Reserve controls mortgage rates. They influence them, but they don't control them. And the mortgage rates has a lot more to do with the bond market. And the bond market is heavily influenced by what inflation expectations are. So mortgage rates have risen largely in response to the inflation expectations that have risen. So my 
thesis, if you will, is now that inflation has peaked, it does appear that it's peaked, mm -hmm. uh, that as inflation comes down, mortgage rates will also probably come down as well. And uh, the, the reason that that's happening is, you know, the Fed is increasing the short-term interest rates, uh, you know, the prime rate, and that's going to have an impact on home equity lines of credit. People are seeing their credit card interest rates skyrocket. Their car loans are more expensive now. Well, what that does is that cools off demand in the economy. And by cooling off demand in the economy, they believe they will cool off inflation. And as inflation cools off, mortgage rates should come down. I mean, there's a lot of experts out there that think mortgage rates will get down in the mid fives next year. I mean, we'll see what happens. But at this point, I, I would not expect mortgage rates to go much higher than they already have. So thank God that uh, was it almost two years ago, I was able to close uh, on my home with a 2.75% rate. That's your best thank asset. God. <laughs> we, we, well, I, I would, I would uh, probably disagree with you on that one, Sean, but that would be for another meeting. We call that timing is everything. <laughs> yeah. you, you are absolutely well, right. You, you but got we, were, right but we got in, time. though, when the the housing i mean they were i mean it was crazy mm -hmm. uh going over asking price i mean 10 20 000, 50 000 over asking price uh, so i okay i guess i want to play the game because i missed out on like you know 20 homes before that so when this one came up i'm like i'm not playing i'm not playing anyone's game i was the first one to put an offer in it was a higher offer and and thank god it was a sunday and the and the, the owner at the time did not want any company on sunday and i called the real estate agent back and i said Please tell him. I will do whatever he wants. I, I Please, we need to come see him today. And I made the offer then and there. And thank God. We went back and forth, yeah. but, you know, uh, nobody else really had the chance. So thank nice. God I was on that because I learned my lesson from the past. And yep. he was ready to sell anyway. Yeah, and those bidding wars are long gone now. I mean, you're yes. not seeing that anymore. Yes. I mean. Yeah, that's correct. So we're, we're thankful for that. And now the R word. I mean, people are talking about the R word. Mm. What do you see on the horizon? I mean, everyone's saying that, uh, you know, we're definitely going to see a recession in 23. Yeah, well, a lot more people are now, and, mm -hmm. and including myself. I mean, I, I do think there's a high likelihood uh, that we are going to have an official recession next year. I think in some parts of the country, you can make the case that other, not Florida, but other parts of the yes. country are already experiencing recession-like conditions. And, you know, the Wall Street Journal uh, back in January uh, surveyed top economists around the country, and at the time, only 18% of them saw a recession coming in the next 12 months. Well, fast forward to the most recent survey. They surveyed those same economists mm -hmm. in October, and now it's more like 63% believe that we're going to have a recession in the next 12 and months. And what is the official definition of a recession? Well, you know, there was a lot of, there was a lot of uh, debate about that. Now, right. the, o the old rule of thumb was that you had two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. Correct. That's what that I was the old That was the old rule of thumb. And, of course, we had two consecutive quarters of negative GDP, sure but the association that makes the official call for a recession refused to call it one because the unemployment rate was so low and inflation and they got was paid so off high. Somehow. Well, they got, they got a call got from the White House. They, they <laughs> got, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, there were forces that said, "Let's change the definition." Yeah, of, I mean, I don't personally have. I, yeah, I personally is, am is. not a. Yeah, I'm not a card-carrying member of the Illuminati, so I do not have. <laughs> uh, I don't have any insights into any of that. But uh, but yeah, that that was the old rule of thumb. They don't but, exist. That's right. Right. Yeah. But there was probably some political expediency that went on to, you know, massage that definition as best we could. Because uh, let's face it, there were midterms coming up at the time. And That's correct. No yeah. no no political party wants to go into the That's midterms. So in a recessionary thank environment. God, this, thank That's God terrible. it's over. Now, with the recession looming over us, possibly, potentially, what's that going to do with the housing market? Well, that's interesting because I think when we all think of, when, when we you know, think of a recession and housing, which recession do we think of? 2008, right? I mean, and that, that was a unique recession because that was the only recession that was caused by housing. So you look at all the recessions going back to 1960. The recessions were caused by something else. But in 2008, the recession was caused by housing. So typically in a recession, house prices do not go down. 
And if you look at all the recessions, they've either stayed flat or they've gone up. Now, I'm not saying that house prices aren't going down if we enter into a recession. That's not what I'm saying at all. Um, what I'm saying is I don't think that a recession means that we have a 2008-style collapse Correct, yeah. of prices where a $350,000 house that sold nine months ago is selling for $125,000 today. I think the reason for that is that we have an extremely low inventory situation in housing. Uh, and so we don't have this glut that's built up of speculative homes that have been built that are going to be offloaded if we have a recession. And secondly, lending standards are a whole lot different today than they were 15 years ago. Yeah, before and, if you had a pulse and you could sign... And uh, you were a liar. Yeah, you were a liar. <laughs> you, you got a, a unsecured loans and all kind of credit yeah. without uh, proof of anything. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's, it's it, it was it, a great time. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Money was flowing. Yeah, there was... Uh, the problem was the hangover the next day. That, that was always the, the problem. the next year. Yeah. Uh, oh, what? for years. Anyway. All, right, all right, so we're at our first uh, break of the show already, so we're having way too much fun as we always do when Sean Williams is in the house. <laughs> so you're watching The Quality of Life. We're listening to The Quality of Life radio show. Uh, hang tight. Grab another cup of joe. Take a little tinkle. And I promise you we'll be back. agency located right here on the Treasure Coast. I've been a resident here for 34 years and have helped thousands of clients with their insurance planning needs. We specialize in life, health, and Medicare insurance planning. Don't travel the road alone. Let us be your guide. We are the Owen Insurance Group. Contact us today at 772-210-1020 or visit our website at oweninsurancegroup.net. Age comes with wisdom and wisdom comes with benefits. That's especially true when it comes to Medicare. So make the wise call and go to CignaWise.com to compare your Medicare Advantage plan to Cigna today. Cigna offers dental coverage and zero dollar primary doctor visits in most areas. Hearing, vision, and an over-the-counter allowance all in one plan. You can even earn rewards for doing healthy activities. So go to CignaWise.com and compare your Medicare Advantage plans to Cigna today. Again, that website is signawise.com. Signa Medicare Advantage. Because wisdom comes with benefits. Benefit options vary by plan and service area. You must reside in the plan service area. Cigna is contracted with Medicare for PDP plans, HMO, and PPO plans in select states and with select state Medicaid programs. Enrollment in Cigna depends on contract renewal. You are listening to WSTU, Stewart, Jensen Beach, Hope Sound, Martin County's Heritage Station. Hey there, welcome back to the Quality of Life. Wait, excuse me, I'm sorry. Welcome back to the world famous Quality of Life radio show. Gary Owen here uh, and Tom the Boo Bouvier. Our special guest is Sean Williams. When we went on break, uh, I was grilling the uh, world-famous uh, economist uh, located right here on the Treasure Coast, Sean Williams, uh, about the housing industry and, and what's going on. And will there be a recession? Uh, he brought his crystal ball with him and, and another special guest, which uh, we're going to break that out in a minute. But, uh, Sean, I want to ask you about foreclosures because um, – you know, we're seeing a lot of people that are hurting. Where are you seeing uh, with Marine Bank? Uh, what are you seeing on the foreclosure side? What, what, are you, what are you guys seeing over there? Yeah, well, it, it's interesting because despite record-breaking inflation and despite the pain that people are feeling, loans are performing uh, historically. I mean, they are, they ever since 2010, uh, 
with the new lending standards that are in place, foreclosures have steadily declined. And right now we're sitting on a record low number of foreclosures. That's great news. It, you know, it's great news. I mean, it, it really does show that the health of the consumer is there on an overall basis. And it, and it goes to show that those lending standards that were imposed are holding up even in the face of these inflationary headwinds. So, you know, it, I mean, it's really not rocket science, right? I mean, if you have stricter lending standards, you're going to have better loan quality. If you have better loan quality, you're going to have less delinquent loans. And if you have less delinquent loans, you're going to have less foreclosures. And so I look at the national banking industry, and I kind of look at the foreclosure rates that are happening. And right now, it's four-tenths of one percent of mortgage loans are in foreclosure. That's uh, low. Yeah, it's well, very... Na nationally. Nationally, right, right. Nationally speaking, it's about four-tenths of one percent. And if you ask uh, folks that are in the bank, uh, you know, the loss mitigation departments, the foreclosure departments, they would tell you that they'd be happy with 1% in a normal environment. And here we are at four tenths of 1%. But here's the real kicker. Hmm. Over 90% of those individuals that are currently in some stage of foreclosure have equity in their homes, meaning that they have options. So whatever financial crisis they have gone through as a family or as an individual, they can you know, hit the parachute, sell the home because they have equity in, in the home rather than just walk away from it and give it back to the bank. That That is something we saw in 2008. And so, yes, we have some foreclosures. It's historically low, but the foreclosures that we're seeing, everybody's flush with equity so they can sell before it really becomes a problem. And where do they go? Well, that's the, you know, they're probably going to become renters at that point. Uh, and, and that's, you know, that's obviously. Not, that's ugly right now, too. Uh, yeah, rental, yeah, the rental situation has gone haywire. And it, and it goes back to supply and demand. We just don't have enough housing units in the United States of America and here in Florida to basically deal with the demographic patch that we have coming through. I mean, you have the millennial generation is huge. People don't realize how big that generation is, and they are now reaching the age of what we call household formation. And so these these kids are, are you know, they're not kids, they're they're in their 30s now, right. and, and they are forming households of their own. And, you know, I mean, maybe some of them are going to live in their mom and dad's basement forever, but I mean, the point, everybody loves or to hate on the millennials, down by right? the river. But, you know, look, <laughs> there's so many of them, and we, and we just came off the most underbuilt decade in American history. I mean, we just didn't build anything for 10 years, and now you've got this big generation, and they have nowhere to go. And so, you know, limited number of units of supply to rent, yeah. and a massive wave of people to rent them mm -hmm. means that rent goes up. Yeah, which brings me to this other question. You know, why hasn't inventory gone up when the demand has dropped? Have we seen the demand drop, or have we? Well, I have an idea for you, Gary. I'll ask you this. Why don't you list your house? I don't want to list my house. And why is I that? I love my home. And why, why would, well, I know you love your home, I but, love my home. but uh, I look at it this way. What was your interest rate? 275. Why on earth would you give up a 2.75%? For 7%? For 7%. For 7%. Heck no. No way. No way. You're an educated borrower, you're an educated consumer. And think about all the people across mm. the country that are sitting on 2.5, 2.75, 3.5, or even 4. What incentive? Do any of them have to list their home for sale? Because if they, you know, they got to go somewhere, to your point. And, and if you're a homeowner currently, chances are you're going to trade up into another home or you're going to, you know, do make a lateral move. Well, in doing so, you're just creating a more expensive house payment for yourself. And people, rightfully so, are mm -hmm. going to be unwilling to do that in the middle of an inflationary environment like we find ourselves in. So we need mm. more cash buyers. We, we need <laughs> what we need is more housing inventory, and it's kind of a shame because you know all the developers and all the all the the, the ones that you're kind of counting on to build it all. Well, guess what? Their interest rates just went up. So the economics of those developments that we were counting on to provide the supply, it's just not there for these developers anymore. So many of them are now backing away, walking away, and you're seeing some of this locally as well. We're can't, still seeing. Oh, go ahead, Tom. Can't they just raise their price of the house? If they, you know, the cost of borrowing the money, but goes that's up. what they are doing. That's too. the that's yeah. the problem. Is that it's the affordability yeah. issue, and uh, I mean, we really do lack workforce housing uh, locally here, uh -huh. uh, everywhere. I mean, it's it's mm. becoming an issue everywhere, and uh, I don't think we're going to dig our way out of it uh, overnight. Well, we see St. Lucie County growing leaps and bounds, and I think I don't know what the latest statistics are for PSL, 
mm-hmm. they were at one point top third fastest growing city in the nation. Yeah. I don't know where we're at with it today, but I know they're still growing. The dirt is still flying in St. Lucie County compared, you know, conversely here in Martin County, you see a lot less dirt flying. Yeah. No, I mean, look, when I say the economy is in a strange place, I really look at it as a tale of two cities, you know, that novel by Dickens. I mean, it's it's the best of times, it's the worst of times. It's going to be the worst of times for significant pockets around the country. And at the national level, we probably will enter a recession. And inflation is a real thing that everybody everywhere has to contend with. Yep. But I think at the end of the day, all economics is local. Hmm. Okay? All economics is local. And, you know, we have... I think, and I think this is still the case, we have over a thousand people a day mm-hmm. moving into Florida. But what's more important than that, it's not just the people that are moving, it's the income and the wealth that they are bringing with them. Florida is number one for wealth migration in the United States right now. I think, uh, I think it was last year, there was about $25 billion of adjusted gross income that migrated <laughs> to the nice. Sunshine State. Do you know what state was number two, if you were to take a guess? Texas. Texas. Yeah, I just say oh. Texas. Texas. Sorry. And they had six billion in AGI migrate. Wow. That means Florida so four had times. four wow. times. I mean, that's what I'm saying. The distance between number one and number two, that just goes to show what's happening here in the Sunshine State. Um, we are also leading the Two nation. red states. <laughs> Gary, I'm not getting into all that here, but uh, that'll be another show. But uh, no, look, we're, we're leading the nation in the attraction of skilled workforce. In fact, we, Florida, actually had the most tech job growth of any other state in the United States last year, including California. Wow. Now, at California. Yeah. Now, they still have the most tech jobs, right. but we had the most tech job growth. And so, you know, look, between that and the record breaking tourism, and the budget surplus that we have, I don't think it should come as any surprise that the Cato Institute ranks Florida as number one for economic freedom. And that is why the outlook, I believe, for our state, and more particularly yeah, here on the Treasure Coast, is good. I mean, look, we're still going to have a national recession, and we're not going to be completely insulated from that. But I still believe that Florida is the cleanest shirt in the dirty laundry. All right, listen, that's a, that's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a great way to no, say it. No, I love it. That, that's cleanest phenomenal. Shirt in it. And I think also, to your point, uh, it, it, it goes by community by community. So I think on the Treasure Coast, we'll be even more shielded. Uh, mm-hmm. than the rest of the state mm-hmm. and the rest of the country as well. Yeah. Uh, something unique about the Treasure Coast. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's all the gold. treasure. It's all, all the, the gold. treasure. We're yes. here. <laughs> gold. Yeah. Well, well, and your special guest is here. So, oh. you know, uh, you know, <clears throat> enough about economics and mortgage rates and the economy. Um, you know, every once in a while, Sean and I, you know, we get together once a month with our whiskey club, and uh, we do these whiskey tastings. Uh, and... You know, we're always uh, a bunch of us guys get together and we try to find some unique whiskeys and bourbons and uh, to share with one another because whiskey is meant to be shared, not to be uh, consumed alone. What fun is that? So uh, we get together and and uh, so Sean told me uh, on his way in this morning that he's going to be bringing a special guest. Mm-hmm. So Sean, uh, would you uh, introduce us to your special guest? Well, my special guest is uh, is often is a very this is a rare sighting i mean you do not see this person this, this old this, geezer this, barely gets around yes yeah. you you're never going to see it in public uh and, and <laughs> it, it's just one of those things but but i managed to get it here in the studio Evan's today. like look he's like where, look, where, where is he what is that you, you per, the legendary behold Pappy Van Winkle. Look at Ooh, that Pappy oh, Van yeah. Winkle. i see uh, i see more glass than i see liquid well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> somebody, somebody's happy been, been visioning been somebody else. Happy. Well, you know, when you're yeah. when you're thinking up all these talking points about the economy, I mean, it's Make uh, thirsty, right? Yeah. Right, you know. So uh, no, Look at anyway, that. I mean, that is absolutely beautiful, uh, and. Actually, we, we <laughs> we're down to the bottom. I mean, as you can see, I don't just collect it. I mean, it's it's been it's meant to Absolutely. enjoy for special occasions like being on the Quality of Life show. You know, I mean, two years was it two years ago or last year? Uh, we had everybody come to my house for our whiskey, our monthly whiskey tasting, and uh, Sean thought it'd be a good idea to have a, a ruse with old Rip Van Winkle. So uh, what we did was we uh, he brought an empty bottle, put colored water in the bottle in the bottle and we were actually live on facebook uh we we, we were trying it and it 
we looked at each other with grimacing faces and spit the nasty stuff out into the sink. And people were like, what the what heck is doing? going on around here? What? They spit out Pappy Van Winkle. But anyway, we uh, it was... It, oh, it, uh, it was. And then we dumped it down yeah, the sink. Yeah, uh, we, we spit it out, and then we dumped the bottle down the sink. But it was, uh, it was April first. Oh, very good. <laughs> you, he got everyone. Oh my God, it was funny. It was, uh, it yeah. was really a good time. Well, Gary, if you would do the honors, I mean. Um... Okay, so ten-year-old uh, Rip Van Winkle, you know, and I'm on uh, a waiting list to get some pappy. I've been waiting. Uh, for, I don't know, you have more luck than I do, but I've been waiting for, I don't know, four years to get uh, a bottle of uh, Pappy Van Winkle. Uh, and and I'm still on a waiting list, and I still haven't received anything. So hopefully, uh, this time around, something will happen. But Slungeva. 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 Mm. What a beautiful color. What a beautiful bottle. What a beautiful smell mm -hmm. but more most importantly what a beautiful flavor mm. whiskey mm. tasting 101 oh wow there's something unique i mean someone uh in my whiskey club sean uh mark i had him over to the house one night he goes all that stuff about pappy van winkle it's crazy i mean come <laughs> on it's not that good no way it's that good. So there's some really great bourbons out there. It can't be as good as this bourbon or that bourbon. So I happened to pull out a, what was left of my 15-year-old, Pappy Ben Winkle. There's, there's about that much left in it now. <laughs> and uh, he sampled it, and I thought he was going to fall off his chair. Mm -hmm. he, oh, it's really good stuff. I believe it. Yeah. No, it's really good stuff. I would never pay the thousands and thousands of dollars those collectors are. They're crazy. Gosh, you know, hedge, hedge fund managers on Wall Street and all that. Hey, good for them. But, uh, but no, I mean, it, you know, I've been, I've been lucky to get it at the local store at retail. And uh, look, I, what I will say is, you know, here we are. I guarantee you this, Gary. We are the only guys right now drinking Pappy Van Winkle at 1030 in the morning on AM radio. I love it. And <laughs> I think more and more people are probably going to start tuning in to the AM radio stations. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Come on. If, if AM radio makes a comeback, it's because of us. I'm, I'm telling Greg you. Greg and Carol Wyatt, you're very welcome. And uh, you'll thank us later. Uh, we'll be bringing more uh, enthusiasts very nice. to the show. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much for sharing uh, a, a little sampling of Rip Van Winkle. Tenure was very special. Um, and you got to watch how we do it here on the world-famous Quality of Life radio show. So uh, we're going to do a quote of the day today. And Tom... Uh, you know, it's been a long journey. You know, when we, when you and I met, you know, you were at a separate place, and and you know, I had just uh, rented that one little uh, office building space in the attorney's office in downtown Stewart. Uh, and you're probably like, "What the heck is well, this? Is this probably is, smaller is this than an this studio. It's definitely uh, yeah. smaller than the studio." Yeah. The journey has been a long one. It's been an arduous one, but it's been rewarding. So, talk to us a little bit about uh, a long road. Because oh. many of us have, have trodden the long, winding road. Absolutely. And as long as you don't get off that road, you keep moving one step ahead of each other, you're going to get there. It's a long road, but your future is so bright. <laughs> Embrace the journey, trust the process, and enjoy the ride. No need to stress. Just focus on your passions and your dreams and watch creation come alive. And That's a beautiful quote. No need to stress when you have... Sean Williams and Pappy Van Winkle by your side. There mm -hmm. you go. Amen. So uh, before uh, Tom and I espouse our unbelievable knowledge and wisdom about the insurance industry, we have 10 weird random fun facts that we want to share. And I'm going to ask uh, Sean, uh, you know, about phobias. Do you have any phobias, Sean? Mm. Hmm. Hmm. I have a, I don't know. I, you know, I, a phobia of phobias. Maybe my, my wife would tell you I probably have a phobia of housework, but uh, but I think I, most of us do. Well, that's yeah. just defined. <laughs> so uh, I know you, you, either you nor I have this phobia, cherophobia. Cherophobia is the irrational fear of fun, having fun, or happiness. Mm. I would have never guessed. I thought it was a fear of share. 
<laughs> you know, because that's how it's spelled. C H E R. That's true. Now, actually, uh, you know, I, I, yeah, I kind of have that fear of uh, shareophobia. You know, I, I got, I got the idea of yeah. share. Uh, I dreamt about <laughs> share not too long ago, actually. And, and someone had. All right, it's family show. The two. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. The the the. Uh, of of all the groups that have disbanded, what would be the one group that you'd want to see back together again? And so many people said Sonny and Don't, Cher. Really? Yes. Isn't that weird? Yeah, that's no. weird. That I was, is really weird. I would never put them in my top 100. But Sonny I'd go with Lincoln Cher. Park. But good. But, you know. Uh, yeah. Tom, <laughs> yeah. let's, uh, let's, how about we just skip the second break? Can we do that? Okay, we're going to skip the, because we got okay. a lot of great stuff. We do. 7% of American adults believe... That chocolate milk comes, comes from where? Where's chocolate milk come from, Sean? Chocolate cows. Yes, brown, brown cows. cows. That's right. He's one of the seven percent. We applaud you. <laughs> no, yes. no, brown cows. How old were you when you realized that? <laughs> yeah, forty-five. Yeah, yeah. There you so, go. So, Sean, do you know why bananas are curved? The way they hang off the tree. They are curved because they grow towards the big yellow ball. Hmm. They grow towards the sun. Interesting. Yeah. Another question for our guest. Oh, yeah. This is a good one for him. All right. Oh, yeah. He knows pretty much everything, but we're going to see. <laughs> Which car manufacturer makes their own sausage? <laughs> well. <laughs> BMW. Close. Mercedes. No. Close. Audi. Close. Nope. Volkswagen. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I knew it had to be German. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're German. We got the plant, make some sausage. <laughs> and why do you think Volkswagen makes their own sausage? Uh, you're going to tell me. <laughs> One of their plants, uh, they're so far away from you know restaurants or food, mm -hmm. so they made their own sausage for the workers so they have something to eat. Uh, during the during the day, do Pretty, they do they have their own uh, on-site yeah. cardiologist too? Or they have a... <laughs> I'm sure they do. Uh, this is a good one. Uh, recycling just one little teeny tiny can, tin can, saves enough energy to watch television for three hours. Hmm, that's interesting. That's not his. Oh, it's mine. So, Gary, another time, someone was chased by 20,000 bees which followed their car for two days because the queen bee was stuck inside. That's some loyalty and dedication. Wow. <laughs> you thought about sticking around. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, tennis players can be fined how much for swearing while playing at Wimbledon? Whew. Whoa. $25,000. Close. $20,000. Wow. How, how nice. much did McEnroe pay over his career? <laughs> yeah, I, mean. yeah. <laughs> I don't think he cares. <laughs> and sea otters hold hands when they sleep so they don't drift away from each other. Aww, Isn't that, that so precious. That's an awe Sweet. moment. Yeah. yeah, that's real cute. I want to be a sea otter when I grow up. <laughs> the Twitter bird actually has a name, Sean. It's not Trump. It's not Elon. It's not Elon. No it's, idea. It's Larry. Larry. Comes from Larry Bird, the famous basketball player. Wow. Mm. See? You learn something new every day on the Quality of Life radio show. Ready for Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you can get this next one. Okay. No. Actually, it's not Ready. a question. So each year, there are more than 40,000 toilet-related injuries in the USA. Hmm. Hmm. They slipped and That's hit poop their poop. head. That's poop. That's yeah. Not, uh, that's that's not, no fun. That's no fun. I wonder how many of them happen after the Cask and Ash Club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> after well, they, after they a visit get from to the toilet. After, <laughs> <laughs> after visiting Pappy O Winkle, oh, Van Winkle. Oh my uh, goodness. Yeah, I, I can remember some times in Scotland uh, where we were having one too many drams, <laughs> and a uh, few of us could not even get to the bathroom. <laughs> some of us were even scraping food into our mouth from the table uh, at a at a five-star Michelin-rated restaurant. Very interesting times. All part of the quality of life. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And, and which goes to show you, right, that we're just like you. We're normal people, and we like to have fun. We work hard. We play hard. Uh, and we're passionate. We, we, we talked about, you know, the, the quote of the day about passions. You know, we are very passionate about what we do. Sean's very passionate about what he does and what he believes in and representing the banking industry. And, and Tom and I and representing the insurance industry and, and, and making sure that you, our beneficiaries, our clients are taken care of. 
and there's a lot of bad actors out there in both of our industries, mm -hmm. uh, in, in every industry. It just it, it, it is what it is. But you've got to find the, the key players that have the integrity, that have the passion, uh, that will always do what's right 100% of the time and have the transparency and be able to educate consumers on the choices that because there is just it's an it's absolutely mind-boggling the number of bad actors that are out there and the good thing is that these tv commercials that all of you because i know I, I ask all of our clients and prospects about these tv pitchmen uh that are pitching you about medicare to call this 800 number blah 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 and 99 percent of you say you hate that garbage it's ridiculous uh, you don't pay attention to it the good news is beginning january 1 uh, they will no longer be able to play those TV commercials without first being approved by CMS and Medicare. So we're excited about that, Tom, because now finally we've been complaining. And, and, and what happens is th uh, there was a knee-jerk reaction by CMS when last year all this stuff happened last year. So they penalized us, the independent agents, uh, that we had to do this and we had to do that. So they made, they made it uh, cumbersome upon us as independent agents uh, we have now uh, record every conversation. We have to be able to uh, have that recording HIPAA compliant, and we also have to have that stored for 10 years. So all these bad actors uh, now are causing us uh, undue harm. And unfortunately, that's just what happens in, in the industry. Yeah, and I, I'm just a, I'm happy that it's happening, but I'm personally just amazed that they're letting it continue for another three or four months. I so I, I don't know who's getting paid off or what the decisions were. Maybe they felt like, well, the, the Medicare clients weren't going to get served, but they're getting served poison or they're getting served a lot of deception. That's correct. Uh, yep. A lot of misinformation. And, and you and I, we, we have personal clients of ours now who we've had to uh, re-educate and re, you know, uh, have them understand what a real plan option and a plan, real Medicare options are. So yeah, I mean, you had a you had a call this morning from somebody uh, mm -hmm. that said that uh, uh, some uh, some other person or an agent, or whatever, gave them misinformation about a Medicare plan that they can't uh, go to a facility or some sort. I, yeah. I don't remember what it yeah, was. Yeah, another state. You know, they said you oh you won't be covered at all if you leave the state of Florida. It's it's crazy. It, it is crazy. I mean, come on, people. Uh, uh, I'm like a you know a new agent or deceptive agent or one of the two. That's that's all mm. it could be. So uh, so we we say all this because there is one number that you should know, one number that you should call, and it is Tom seven seven two two one zero one zero two zero or seven seven two two ten ten twenty. Both those numbers are beautiful numbers. They're powerful numbers. And they will get you connected to somebody who will provide you the service that you need, unbiased information, transparency, asking you open-ended questions to determine which is the best plan for you. Whether it's Medicare, whether it's individual health insurance, life insurance, disability insurance, what have you, we are going to go to work for you. We do the heavy lifting, and we will find you the plan that's most suitable for you, not what's good for the insurance carrier. I probably shouldn't say but, that on, well, that, on live on the fancy, radio, yeah. but that's just at the end of the day. You know, we love our carrier partners. I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying that by no stretch of the imagination. We've got great carrier partners, but at the end of the day, as independent brokers, Thomas, you and I represent the Medicare beneficiary, absolutely, the client. So, and those great Medicare carriers are one of many options that we show our, our right. clients, and it's that fancy word called fiduciary, mm -hmm. which means we're only going to recommend and, and speak to them in the, their best interest. Yeah, but we'll always do what's not only legal but ethical uh, for our clients. So now, you know, with that being said, you know, we only have how many days, Tom, before December seven? So we're about mm. three weeks out. Uh, roughly three weeks mm -hmm. away from December 7th. So you only have three weeks left to make a decision. Uh, we recently received a report uh, that less than half of the, I think 30 some percent of Medicare beneficiaries have even conducted a review. That's muy malo, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, that's very bad because if you're honest, uh, whether it's a PDP plan uh, or a Medicare Advantage plan, and you don't have a review because these formularies change every year, the plans change every year, the benefits change every year. Uh, you could be stuck in a plan that you're not gonna be happy with. May have been good for you in 22, 
But moving into 2023, you may have problems. And and you and I both have had clients this past week where we did the review on their uh, MAPD plan and wore the drug plan and able to save them over $1,000 because of the formulary change, the tier levels change, and now we got them into a different plan where they were able to save money and get better benefits, for God's sakes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the prescription drug plan, that one is so clear. The Part D, if you have a separate standalone drug plan, let us review that plan because for 2023, you also may have been put on a new medication or they took an expense and went off. And so you have so many options. We do this all the time. We can do it in our sleep, so to speak. But um, call us at 772-210-1020, and we'll get you a free, no obligation, no cost, annual review of your Medicare options. And you can also stop by the office. We're located right behind Kiwa's Diner. So if you uh, have the munchies, stop in and, and have a great uh Sean and I, uh, Sean was mm. the first time he was there well, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I think we went there and uh, had a gyro and man, off the chart stuff. Really good Phenomenal stuff. Phenomenal food. Mm. So I give it, you know, we'll give a shameless plug out to our friends yeah. at Key West Diner because they're great. But we're located right behind Key West Diner, right next to Beach's MRI. So uh, if you need an MRI done, uh, and, and you're hungry, you'll go to Beaches, get your MRI, go to Key West Diner, get some grub, come to Owen Insurance Group, and uh, we'll, we'll take good care of you <laughs> over there for sure. So, uh, And also, I want to remind everybody, too, now, uh, there have been probably no less than two uh, client, potential clients, prospects, who were only on original Medicare. Nine percent. This is this is staggering for me. I just I just can't wrap my head around it. Nine percent of Medicare beneficiaries in the country today only have original Medicare A and B. They have nothing else. So either A they 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 don't they're not aware that they can get something else, uh, or maybe they don't they think that they can't afford it, or they don't know who to go to uh, to get the help that they need. So I strongly uh, recommend that you don't stay on original Medicare. So for example. Part A, Tom, the Part A deductible for 23 is going up to how much? $1,600. $1,600. Very good. So so imagine uh, you go to the hospital and there are five benefit periods in, in, in Part A. So you could hit that $1,600 deductible five times in 2023. So having an only original Medicare leaves major gaps to your coverage. Part B as well. So Part B, the deductible, good news, has gone down for 23. Not much, but it's gone down a little bit. But once you hit the 226 deductible, how much are they going to have to pay after that? They'll continue to pay 20%. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and what's the cap on that 20%? Is it a, is it a 10, the moon, five, the, the moon? galaxy, yeah, right. there's no limit. So, a, no out-of-pocket so, maximum. I mean, I get that there are some reasoning to only having original Medicare because you know, typically uh, there are some facilities uh, that may not take, uh, depending on a chronic condition that you have, uh, may not take Medicare Advantage if you're only on a Medicare Advantage. So uh, they will only take original Medicare. So I get that. Uh, but you know my admonition to everyone here that's watching, so have a review done, number one. Number two, find out and understand the difference between A, Medicare supplement with original Medicare, or B, taking the managed care route on a Medicare Advantage plan. You need to know the differences. I'm, I'm telling you right now, if you don't have that figured out and you don't know the difference, there are people still come in and say, I'm on a Medicare supplement plan. And they pull out their PPO or their HMO card. But isn't it the same? No, <laughs> not the same. Not at all. So go to the experts. Listen, uh, if, if you uh, have foot pain, you're not going to go to a plumber. You're going to go to a podiatrist, right? Uh, if if uh, your power goes out and you've got a short uh, in your home, uh, you're not going to go to a doctor. You're going to go and call an electrician. So call the experts. Again, Tom and Gary are experts in our field, and you should be picking up the phone and calling. And don't just, you know, think about it. Well, I'll, I'll give them a call to Marcos. You're going to forget. You, life's going to get in the way, and you're going to forget, and you're going to cause yourself more problems and more frustration. So pick up the phone today and call us at 772-210-1020. And listen, you know, I just did a little segment, like a 30-second segment, uh, a video to explain to you and all of our prospective clients that we do not charge a dime for our services. Not a dime. How do we get paid? 
Well, Gary, we're very similar to real estate agents. That's the way I like to uh, let people know. You know, we show them many different houses. We show them all the different options. We find what's best for them. And if you're in the housing market, you find the house of your dreams. You purchase it, and that agent gets a commission. They get paid. And so in a similar way, when we show all the different options and we help someone enroll in a new plan that would best for them, we do get compensated from the individual carriers, the health insurance carriers. And that's as simple as it gets. So, uh, again, I, I just had, an, <laughs> had another call yesterday. Well, how do you get paid? Uh, this is great, Gary. I love it. Thank you so much for because uh, it was a referral uh, from another uh, client of ours. Uh, and and uh, sh- uh, Dawn wanted us to uh, uh, reach out to their par- her parents. Uh, had some issues with their current Medicare plan. And they've been on this plan for freaking four years the same plan for four years so uh obviously a lot of things have changed so they weren't aware of new benefits that they could have and new opportunities so again it's worthwhile to pick up the phone and have a a no obligation quote and review done on your existing i don't care if it's medicare if it's health insurance if it's life insurance if it's disability long-term care we just had a client come in uh, we helped her with her uh, real estate agent, to your point. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was a real estate broker, uh, and uh, uh, she has a large agency. Her and her partner own a, a very large agency here on the Treasure Coast. So, so we were to help her with uh, get her out of the uh, ACA plan that she was in and saved more than 50% in premium with a UH1 policy, a bridge to Medicare mm-hmm. plan, because she's 63. So we were able to help her with that. And then uh, she brought in a, a policy, a long-term care policy for her mother. Uh, it was going up a hundred percent wow in premium uh, and had just gone up 50 percent the year before mm. and going up a hundred percent again so uh i gave her some advice as to what she should do with that policy and she was happy about it she took the advice uh and again these are the things that we do at no cost uh, again because we're looking out for you for your best interest because you are our family we treat you like family and that's that's how we do that's how you should do business the old-fashioned way and, and not you know not be unscrupulous and it's just so absolutely much and there. and Gary if people need a loan they don't go to the corner and talk to Guido and Mario they <laughs> they call Marine Bank and they Trust call Marine Bank and Trust <laughs> that's right well with the lending standards where they are today some people have to go to Guido but uh, <laughs> but but no I I think Marine it's, Bank it's, and Trust it, is a wise choice. It, 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 Make sure you wear knee pads. <laughs> so, so Sean, if, if somebody, we wouldn't even talk about that. We should we should really give Marine Bank and Trust a plug in the last two minutes that we got here. Mm-hmm. What's a good number, if they want to know, you know, in a nutshell, a 30-second commercial, why would someone call Marine Bank and Trust, and how do they call Marine Bank and Trust? Well, Marine Bank is a small business, just like you. Uh, And I know that sounds a little strange to think of a bank as a small business, but if you look at the federal government's definition of what a small business is, they defined it a couple years ago as businesses with less than 100 employees. Well, today we have about 80. And what that means is that we, you know, we're we're not just your neighbors, but again, we're small business operators. We, We understand all the obstacles and headaches and challenges that come with running a business. And I am one of the decision makers. I'm one of the bank executives. And I don't think you're ever going to see a bank commercial where one of the bank executives gives out their personal cell phone number. So that is what I would like to do. If anybody has a question or is interested in Marine Bank and Trust, my personal cell phone number is area code 772 349-2202. Again, that's 772-349-2202. I may not answer. I might be running the bank, but I call everybody back. And for all you single lovely ladies out there, yes, he is taken. Just FYI. Uh, all right, so uh, we're, we're at the last minute. Of, of course, he's so gorgeous. How could he not be taken? Uh, our next week's guest on the show is a secret. I cannot share that with you, but uh, you want to stay tuned for next week's show. And, and again, Tom and I will be here uh, and uh, espousing our uh, un- unimaginable knowledge that we have with all of you today. So thank you for joining us. We appreciate you. Please share us with your friends, your family, your neighbors. And remember Treasure Coast. Stay safe. Keep healthy. Be happy and enjoy your quality of life.